Hey John, this is Mike at Van Underwood Dodge here in Whiteville. Um, this is the Grand Caravan. Now I found out that the the color is actually a deep cherry red. So um, I, you know, I confirmed that with the VIN number in the parts department. So I don't know if that makes a difference to you, but um, just found that out. So I'm kind of do a visual inspection here on the outside. Now I did pull it in the shade because sometimes direct sunlight kind of the glare um, makes it to where you can't see scratches and stuff sometimes so the shade kind of reveals more so one thing just doing a walk around I did notice if you catch the angle of the light just right there's a little bit of a, a dimple there right here in the uh, the plastic bumper cover here so it's been bumped into something there over here it looks like it's there's something right here but I can't tell if it's something that needs to be cleaned off or if it's been touched up or I'm not sure what that is here in the front the headlights look perfect there's no fading or anything there And they tend to fade sometimes um, if they're not maintained. It's good to wax your headlights uh, and that way it keeps them lasting longer. So here on the hood, I'm seeing something right here. And it looks like similar to what's over here on the, the bumper cover as far as that. So I'm not sure what that is. You can, you can feel it. And hopefully you can see it in the video but uh, you know from a distance you can't really notice it it could be where like maybe a, a rock or something kicked up on the highway something like that all right so moving on this looks like some dust on it right here tires look good as far as their tread depth wheels look good I didn't notice any kind of flaws in the windshield it does have some dust on it but there's no like chips or cracks or anything like that this is something that's kind of scraping off Like it, it just seems to be rubbed off. I think they wax this car and there's some wax residue here and there and they, that's a normal thing when when vehicles come in we do have it washed and waxed so it's like some of the wax now this right here kind of looks like a little bit of a scuff I can't feel it but just uh, you can see it a little bit and it could be something some kind of leftover wax or something right here there's some wax in there but if I feel right here it kind of feels like it's not really flush like the other side so I'm not sure what that is I don't know if it's something that might be able to realign it or what there's a little bit of a scuff there. It looks like it's just in the clear. Here's some more something there. That actually looks like it has lifted up, like the power lift gate is lifted up, and there's um. I guess like a little bit of a scratch there here on the back it's not very noticeable from a distance which now it is now that I point it out and look at it it's there all right so this side it feels a little bit more flush it's a little bit it's kind of like a soft material up against a hard material so as far as it, it's not really 
super flush on this side either. So just to kind of give you a heads up on that. I'm not noticing any kind of dents or damage where anybody's like backed into anything. It just just not lining up 100% perfect. Now I've had situations like that, you know, with new vehicles and stuff, so it's not un unheard of. Little tiny nick here. This is just some dust on it. little tiny stuff like that there's a couple of well those are just dust but right here there's a little tiny like a little tiny scratch I guess you can say here's some there's a scratch I can feel it right there and right there now these are something that might be able to be touched up but um, they're there definitely I'm just gonna hold the camera really high so you can see the roof. I can't really see up there. All right, so that's the outside. So I'm gonna use the key. Now I found out it has one key. So that's something to consider. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the side doors using the, the key. You push them, kind of push them twice kind of fast. And it opens up the doors there. And then also I'm going to open up the tailgate. Alright, so here's the inside of the back door. And you can also close the tailgate right here. But there's also on the key. And here's the back storage area. Now these seats will fold down into the storage area if you want to use the the uh, the stow and go seating I'm going to show you that one two three and then four and then it flips down so that's what it looks like when you fold the seat down here And you can see back here we've got some cup holders and stuff for the third row passengers. And then there's the third row seat. There's the ceiling. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and close the tailgate using this button. And it beeps at you a couple times. And then closes down. There's this seat here, and now you've got your separate seats. This is a stow and go seating, so you have a little bit of space between the seats for people to, you know, like reach up between or walk between there. And I'm just going to kind of fold this up like so, and then that way we can look back here a little bit easier. We've got a power supply back here. And look at the other side. There's that. Here's the inside of the door. Now it's got some like some ebony wood grain there, and then your black um, and then tan two tone. Now this is auto. Um, window so basically you can just push it down one time and it'll go down by itself I'm gonna go ahead and start it up let me reach in here and do that just so I can show you just push that one time and the window goes down and then you pull it up real hard and it goes up here's the manual it does have a manual it's a manual and a um, and a CD here. 
see the CD is still sealed that goes into a computer and then you got the manual here that kind of tells you how to use the vehicle now in order to close the side doors all you have to do is push this button here and it'll close like that I'm going to go ahead and close this door. Alright, so here's the inside of the, the driver's door here. And you've got your, your power windows. Now, these back windows will roll down just like that to about right there. And then roll up. And they, do, they are privacy glass. They're not tinted um, with film or anything. It is actually in the glass. But these are not power glass. Powered, uh, the windows will not go all... If you just push it you have to hold it in order for the window to go down and up and there is controls on the inside of the back door too and uh, you got your automatic doors there now this button is for your side glass it goes up and closed like that and so it opens and closes both both sides power uh, side mirrors you can adjust those and the side mirrors are heated as well power seat with lumbar support here there's your headlight controls. They're not automatic. You do have to turn them on and off. And there's your dimmer switch there. I'm going to hop in. Alright. Now, it does have adjustable pedals. So we can adjust the, the brake and the gas pedal, accelerator pedal. Using this button here, it kind of goes forward and, and back. I can pull this down. I can adjust the steering wheel out in like a telescope and then up and down and then once I get it right where I want it I just lift this back up locks it in place now there's some controls here on the steering wheel first thing I want to point out is on the back of the steering wheel we have a volume button on the back of the steering wheel on this side is you can change to the stations so I'm going to turn the volume back down and you can, you know, use the knob here to, for the volume and th turn through the stations here. It just, just keeps your hands on the wheel when you're doing that. Cruise control is on, on this side. You just have to make sure it's turned on, which you'll get to be a little indicator light to make sure it's turned on, and then you can hit set. And here's your windshield wiper controls. Now, this, these buttons here um, is to step through your trips here and also your distance to empty and your temperature trip A, trip B distance to empty and then you've got a zero miles per hour that's showing your spin out your speed and your miles per gallon average and an outside temperature there and that's basically this button here steps through all those features and you can hit the reset to reset your trips so there's your gauges fairly simple and your shifters here um, so it's out of the way so basically you can just you know put it in gear and you're good to go you don't have to worry about having a, a shifter or anything or a big column shifter in your way this little disc is somebody used um, a like a GPS or something there and it's like a place to, for a suction pad to go to now this is put on with adhesive this can be removed but usually we leave them in just in case the the new customer wants those there and uh, if they don't we can remove it it's not a problem now here's the CD player um, it is a CD player as well as an mp3 player it holds uh, one disc so you can just put it in there and play it and also it has a AM FM uh, no satellite radio right here is an auxiliary input you can plug in an iPod or any kind of portable sound device that um, even a telephone or anything to plug into there and play off of that device down here is your dual zone climate control and uh, this is for the passenger this is for the driver now your rear controls are here you have your rear controls and you can adjust your fan speed and your temperature and, uh, and then you know where you want the air to blow here on the, on the front eco mode this is uh, your gives you your best economy while you're driving you just keep that on a little leaf shines green to let you know that the vehicle knows that you want to have the best fuel economy it'll adjust the shift points 
and uh, and stuff like that with the transmission in order to maintain the highest fuel economy possible. If you turn that off, you can get a little bit more performance out of the vehicle. So that's something to keep in mind. Your traction control here, you can turn that off by pushing this button. Normally it's on when the vehicle is on. Down here is a little pocket. You have a pocket here, which you have uh, two power supplies in there as well. And you do have like a little space down here to put stuff. Cup holders are here. Now this slides back, you got some more storage space with some place to put some coins. Close that up. And I like the way they have these little covers here because if you're putting stuff in there and you can just kind of close it, you don't have to see it. And also, if you drop something or you can lay something here, um, you can lay your phone here and it won't really, it kind of stays put in the space because it has a little edge here. There's your glove compartment on the top and bottom. That's your rear view mirror. And you've got some tap lights here on both sides. Place to put sunglasses is here. You also can lift it up, drop it back down, and you have a conversation mirror so you can see uh, the, the backseat drivers basically. It does not replace the rear view mirror just for the interior. Um, you can kind of see where everybody's at in the back. These are your buttons if you want it while you're sitting in the driver's seat. If you want to open the side doors or the back, you can do that. You can also lock out the, the doors here in case you have a child in the back seat and they, you don't want them opening up the doors. This is a rear view, um, I mean, a, a mirror in the um, visor. No lights though. This one has a mirror but no lights. what it looks like back there now I forgot to show you this is your your controls there for your backseat drivers they can adjust it or you can adjust it up here so that way you have um, you have both and basically you have to put it in see where it says rear you have to put it to the rear like you have to put it to that setting that way the people in the back can adjust it. If you have it up here and you're adjusting it, it locks them out from being able to adjust it. So that's something to know. Let's take a look under the hood so we can just kind of get an idea of what the engine looks like and sounds like and all that good stuff. Usually just right here to the right. Oh, it's on the left side on this one. All right, so this one has a 3.6 liter um, Pentastar V6. It does have a VVT system, which adjusts the valves in real time while you're driving to get you the best performance and gas mileage. Everything's color coded. You've got yellow. Uh, is the stuff that you can check on your own. You do have an insulated battery to help uh, keep that running strong for you. But um, basically it looks like a brand new vehicle there. Alrighty. Now I'm you know if I've missed anything let me know and I can you know give you more detail on anything, but um, I think you got a general idea of the condition and the features of this vehicle. And it does have, you know, slight minor flaws here and there, but overall, it's very similar to a, you know, feel of a, a brand new one. So, anyways, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this was adequate enough to uh, help you make your decision on this van. And, um, and let me know, and I'll see you later. Thanks.